Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got three replays in the British tier 10 450,000k whatever you want to call it free XP reward tank. The Valor or the F was it T95 FV4201. Now this is a heavy tank that is a very good tank but annoys me. And it annoys me because the gun trolls the living hell out of me. Absolutely trolls me. But it, as a package, the whole tank is very nice. I'd rather be playing something like the T95 E6 that you see on the left, though. Because even though that gun is derpy, I know it's derpy. So I find, kind of like, if I miss, I'm not as annoyed. When this .35 accuracy gun decides, you know, I'm just going to hit the floor. It's like, hmm. Right. Sure. Okay, then. Thank you. It's very nice of you. And it annoys me in that way, and I really prefer the Chieftain's Gun, the normal Chieftain's Gun, in a lot of ways. But 440 Alpha on this baby is very good, obviously the penetration is good. One thing that does annoy me, and I wish it was the other way around, I don't know why they did it this way around. It's something that carried on from PC for this tank when they brought it over. And that is, for some reason the shell velocity on the premium round is better than the standard round. And I, I just don't get that. Because, to me, they should have made it so that the standard round had the 1300 meters a second shell velocity. And the premium round had the 1100 meters a second. So, you know, you gained more pen but lost that shell velocity. Whereas on the standard round you had the better shell velocity but less pen than the premium. You, if you get catch my meaning. And it's really annoying because that means that the standard round just feels incredibly slow for APCR. And that's probably one of the things that adds to why it feels kind of derpy for me. And it just irritates me a little bit. Because I'm not the biggest fan of slow shells. Well, slow APCR shells, that is, anyway. But yeah, I mean, so the Valor is one that I, I haven't really played all that much. Because I'd, just, I'd rather play a Chieftain. Like, but then again, this tank is a lot better at doing what the Chieftain should be doing. Because the turret is just infallible for the most part. Whereas the Chieftain does get laughed at a little bit. Obviously, the Chieftain's incredible DPM is something that makes it fantastic. That's the other thing though, this does get good hash rounds. It gets the same 140 pen hash rounds that the Chieftain gets, but it has like a thousand meters a second shell velocity on its hash compared to the Chieftain, which is like 600 meters a second I want to say, something like that. It's very very slow on that Chieftain. So that makes it very satisfying. As well as having obviously the high pen, 270 and really good premium rounds. So we're on Duckler Pass, not Duckler Pass, Kaunas, this is Kaunas, sorry for us. Lithuania's best hashtag number one map and we took an aggressive position in this place here and that's because we can spot the whole north we can get good damage out and you can get a good amount of assistance as well if people actually shoot what you're spotting but right now no one is shooting anything we're spotting we're, we're the ones that are doing pretty much all the damage to these guys and like you see this position is really good for those that have a strong turret because you can stay hull down, you can use your gun depression, and you can just wreck these guys incredibly easily. And not take as much punishment in return. It's better to be in this position when you're in a tank that's got the turret armor, because otherwise you just get a little bit caught out and wrecked quite easily. But, you know, it's, it's a very, very good aggressive position to take. You do need that little bit of support, obviously, though, for it to work out. Because if you don't have the support, then it's quite easy to be overwhelmed. And as you see with that mouse, if you don't have the support, they just they rush you like he did. But obviously, I had the support. He got shut down, and we just hugged him a little bit so he'd bounce on the turret, and we killed him. And it didn't work out for him. But now that that position's outlived its usefulness, we've moved up. Now, we don't want to stay where we are currently all that much, because the T95 E6 does worry me. As you see, he pens me there, because he's already tracked me, and he's already penned me. Then the Leopard 1 just drives out, because this is his front. Thank you very much, buddy. We'll give you a nice shot into that. We get shoot him down, and we know, like I say, we can move into this left, keep this rock on our right, and we're covered from the guys like T95 E6. But, there's now a little bit of distraction going off, so I'm quite happy to poke round and give this Leopard a good slap. We get lucky that he bounces on me. He kind of went, wait... Wait, wait, is it, is it, is a Valor driving in front of me? Oh, oh, okay, I'll shoot it. And then bounce, and then he bounced again for some odd reason. Don't know how. 
And we shut him down. We shut down the Centurion. We're on five kills. We're thinking, that, God, it'd be nice to have that top gun right about now. We're at 6.2k damage, five kills. It's like, please, T95E6, come back. Don't don't run into the rest of my team. Why? Why you do this? Get a nice shot. I was hoping to track him, which which we do, which is why I sort of let the, sh the gun aim lag behind where he was because I was hoping I'd get that shot into his drive wheel. And we tracked him. We got some assistance off it. And luckily enough, we managed to finish him off with the sixth kill and our top gun. And just a very, very nice game in the Valor on Kaunas. Kunas? Kaunas? I don't know how you say that. We'll take it. But it's Lithuania's number one map. So we finished that game. Six kills. High caliber. Top gun. Sniper. 1800 base. Nearly 7k damage. 1500 assists. And... When I talk about gun being derpy, 24 shots fired, 24 hits, and 19 pence. Because, of course, why not? If I slag the gun off, it's going to be amazing. Because, yeah, why not? So here we are in the second game. And this time we're platooned up with Swindle and Goodcat, and we're on Nomni Nom. Yeah, it's not it's not Nomni Nom. It's Nomni Nom. Okay. Yeah, it's easier. So we're on Nomni Nom, and we're going to go to the hills over here at, like, E, whatever that is, E4, D5. Again, I think I did this the other day. I can't remember which which video it was. Where we pushed down here anyway. We pushed down here aggressively. Down to where I'm looking at B3. Because that's a good place to rush to if you're going to do it. And if you're in something that's quick enough to do it. That was it. It was the chisel, wasn't it? It was the chisel third part video. Yes. We're on the same map and we did that play. Again, it's completely dependent. That play is dependent on what the enemy team does and the tank you're in. In a Valor, I might make it down there without getting pooped on in the side. But at the same time, I might struggle. So now that was a bad shot on the back of Lynch then. <laughs> that was terrible aim. And I can't blame the gun for that one, unfortunately. So we missed that. And we're just going to sort of half side scrape off this rock. Make it a bit difficult to pen, pen as if we pull back. And I was looking for... There was something else that shot at us from that back area. And I was just looking to see if it fired at someone and I could see it. And there it goes, the Conqueror. It must have been that Conqueror that was crossing. But I'm still popping a shot because you never know, there might be something there. There was a T95 in that chisel replay doing that same place. And there we go, there's a TD spot. Oh, if you can just see it at A5, A5, it got lit up for a second. And it was just outside of our render. And now we're being aggressive. We're making the move up because... There we go, the Agpanzer. It was. So even if we'd hit it, we'd have probably bounced. But we duck him. We're just like, nope. 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 No, Don't the Agpanzer. We don't want that. And we're just being a bit careful. We're looking for that Capola shot. And it ricochets, unfortunately. But like I said, we're, we didn't want to be stuck where our team is at E3 now. Because it's not the best place to get stuck. Because otherwise you're getting stuck into these little, like, hull down brawls and this is sort of it can be a bit of artillery heaven to be honest because obviously artillery can just pummel you as you sat on the ridge lines you're all spotting each other you're all out in the open and it just again it leads to a war of attrition as we move up we get pummeled by artillery because why not we get a nice shot into the low plate of the Jagdpanzer that's why and that right there is why 440 is very nice on this gun and that's because we rolled for over just over 500 and you can get those sorts of rolls with 440 and that's it's really juicy it's very, very nice to have that with a gun. Especially when it is semi-accurate. I mean, gun trolls the living hell out of me. And it just frustrates me a little bit. Which is why I don't really play it. Because, you know, I prefer playing... I probably prefer more, playing more mobile tanks. And basically, if a gun is going to be derpy... If, if it tells me it's going to be derpy, I'm happier to miss shots than I am if I'm playing a tank. That it says it's going to be quite accurate and just isn't. But that's me. So we're getting some nice shots out from this position. Like I said, we are hull down, so I'm confident we'll take whatever whatever the game throws at us. The only thing that will scare me... Well, I mean, I am scared of it at the minute as well, and that is artillery. Now, again, this Death Star, I'm pretty confident, especially since... There we go. Especially since the nerf. I'm pretty confident that, that those Death Stars are... When I go hull down against them, they're not going to be launching Hesh. They're not going to slap me for like 800 anyway. They're probably just going to be firing AP and they'll probably bounce, and like you did... I was hauled down against him, so I could use my amazing turret armor. Bounced his shell. Easy. I mean, uh, on the whole, as an all-round tank, this tank is definitely better than a Chieftain. Right? 
because it's got hull armor. Now, it's not got, obviously, amazing, I'm going to bounce everything hull armor, but it's got hull armor that sits there and goes, you know what, I'm just going to bounce that. And, yeah, okay, I've done it. I bounced it, you know. And it, it's very troll in the way it does it. And it's definitely a hell of a lot better than the Chieftain's. The Chieftain, Chieftain has a great upper plate with its angling, but the lower plate is complete garbage, and it's quite tall as well, so it's quite easy to hit that lower plate. Whereas with the Valor, not so much. And that means that the frontal arm is actually pretty decent. It can also side scrape the Valor quite nicely, whereas the Chieftain can't side scrape. The Chieftain just gets completely trashed when it tries to do it, unfortunately for it. As well as that, obviously, the turret as well on the Chieftain it has that glaring cupola. It's really flat on the Valor, which just makes the turret all around better because it's just it doesn't get penned all that often unless people are starting to sort of shoot down at you. The, the thing that lets this tank down a little bit is the gun. Now, the gun is still okay, right? And I think, to be honest, it's one of those tanks where if you... Sadly, if you load full gold in this tank, the gun is amazing. The tank is fabulous. But if you stick to standard rounds, the gun can be troll as hell. And you just don't... It doesn't feel that great with the shell velocity. And it's frustrating in that way, because it does feel like you're doing yourself a disservice by just loading... Like I do, a st you know, half and half. Because I don't want to load full gold. I don't want to play it that way. That's crappy to me but at the same time it just makes the tank better so I don't, I don't know but yeah so the gun is the thing that makes the chieftain the gun is amazing the dpm is amazing everything about that gun and the way it handles and the way it performs its pen everything is, is amazing but this tank as the whole package the complete thing is definitely better than the chieftain in my eyes it, it puts up competition with the super conqueror but the super conqueror is just a dumb tank it's fabulously good and that makes it a little bit boring for me. But it, it, it's a one trick pony. It, well, it just sort of goes and gets hauled down, sits there, and just laughs at everyone, the Super Conqueror. But yeah. So right now we're in this dip on No Man Harm, and we've been using it to good effect. We've been hauled down against these people. We took the shell from the Death Star there. You know what I said about him loading AP earlier on? No, he's firing Hesh this time, but he did about five, six hundred damage. And again, it's, you know, we're hauled down, so we were confident it wasn't going to do anything to us. We're looking for the shot on this t LT. Can we find it? No, of course we ricochet because angles and APCR. Doesn't matter if it's got tons of, it's got like lack of armor. The APCR will still laugh at you sometimes. But we shut him down nicely, and we're just going to poke for this ridge line. We know where the Death Star is. We know, I think it's the Lorraine that's still left alive, and we're just going to poke over. Ah, it's the Projector that's still alive. We get a nice shot into him. He's shut down. We're on 7.5k at the minute. That Death Star looks like we might not get a shot at him. Unless he pokes, pulls back. And do you know what I'm saying about that gun? And hitting slim, not hitting slim shots. Well, there it is. And we finished that game with 4 kills, 7.7k damage. And an incredibly nice game for the Valor again, where you get hauled down and you just laugh at everyone. We've got High Caliber, Confederate, First Class. Shockingly, this was a First Class, whereas the first game was an Ace. Don't ask me. 1500 base. And like I say, it's a very good game. 25, 22, and 19. It's not too bad. Good block since 2.7. So, the next game doesn't have any sound to it. This is why I've tacked it on to the end of this video. So, if you don't really want to watch a replay with me babbling over the top of a soundless game, probably now is the time to switch off. And it's really annoying that this get that my capture card decided that this was the time to record the game, but with no audio. Very annoying. It's one of those things that you don't find out until you get to the final bit. You pull the USB stick out, or you, you know, you pull the USB stick out of it. You plug it into your laptop. You go right, okay. Let's watch this game. Why is there no sound? Wait, no! Cries eternal tears of pure pain and sacrifice so unfortunately yeah this game doesn't have any sound but it was it was a good game which is why i've waited because i've had this one in the bank for quite a while and i've had the other one i think it was the first game was in the bank for a little bit as well and i didn't want to show the first game with another with this game that had no sound i'd have rather shown you two games that have sound so you get the proper quality out of it and then you get this game which is a very good game in the valor but then i managed to but then I tack it on the end. So if if you, you didn't want to watch the replay with absolutely no sound, because I mean, it's really odd to be honest to watch this game 
and it's got no sound, you've got no feedback, no gun sounds, no crew sounds, no artillery blowing up next to you, and you can't hear death raining from above. So, yeah, so, yeah, it, okay, we're, so we're on Redshire. This is a map I've not seen, it's Redshire 1944. I've not seen this map in God knows how long. I miss it so much because I like Redshire. I like both versions of Redshire. It's a great map. It's like Westfield and Erlenberg. I mean, Erlenberg annoys me, but I do kind of miss it now that I haven't seen it in so very long. Moravanka. Where are my maps? They're gone. I miss them so much. One day, map rotation will turn back to normal. I hope whenever the new update is, which I assume the new update will be when... The current season ends, which is in, well, I think it's around the 7th of December, 8th of December, some, so the first week in December anyway. Somewhere around that is when the current season of Hot Wheels ends and we get the new season, whatever that may be. Hopefully it's okay. And hopefully that's when we'll get our maps back, because hopefully what's happened, and it's obviously pure speculation, and it's what quite a few people think now, especially with 5.0 coming in and when they gave us... The new maps, new, well, new maps, reworked maps to have better foliage and stuff like that, just look better generally. I expect when they did that, that they took some of the maps that we currently have out of the rotation, like Normal Mally as well. I miss Normal Mally so much. I hate Mally Winter. It's a terrible version of the map. And I hope that they've taken them out to rework them. And when we get this new update, that's when they'll come flying back into the matchmaker and we can have some nice variety back to the maps. Not see Sunset Coast, Abbey, and El Haloof every two seconds flat. And Himmelsdorf. Because that's what it feels like at the minute. It's kind of a chore at times. Because once you've played about five to ten games, you're a little bit bored because you've seen the same maps four or five times over and it's kind of annoying. And that's that's the way we are at the minute. It's kind of it's kind of sad, but I mean, we're not far away from the new update, so it's just a grit and bear it until that happens. So what's happening in this game anyway? We're on Redshire. We've taken the aggressive ridges, and we're just waiting for Swindle in the Tusk to go light more stuff up. So like he's lit this Jagdpanzer up. Unfortunately, we didn't fully aim the shot, so the gun misses. We are in a platoon with Swindle and the new community manager for EU PC EU and that's Jack the Ripper congratulations to him and we're trying to win this game <laughs> so we've got a nice shot into the Ag Panzer for what was it 440 that's quite nice and we've loaded Prem because we want to go through the superstructure of this guy obviously if we get the lower plate that'd be juicy but we're trying to just snipe his superstructure unfortunately we ricochet that shell he's an awkward target target to take and obviously I'd I don't really want to get spotted here because he might black me in the back. But at the same time, like you see, I'm being cautious of that because he will do it. And that's why I'm keeping this rock here. But I want to help my friends over there because look how aggressively the enemy team is pushing. Right? He's just slapped my friend there. Again, he's an awkward pen, so I need to help my friends on these ridge lines over here. Because if they get round, they'll end up being able to shoot Jack in the back at A8. That rhymed. Don't go there. And I don't want that because we need to hold the flank. I mean, it is team destruction, so it doesn't matter about the caps. It doesn't matter about defending them, stuff like that. But we finally decided, especially now that the guys over there are dying, that we need to get away from that Jagdpanzer. So we slid back over the ridge onto this side of it so that he can't shoot us. And we can start to put the gun to work on these guys. And they are presenting us with shots. They're not really dealing with me. And I think that's because they're kind of preoccupied with what's going off in front of them. And I could keep doing that. But I'm starting to draw attention from them. Like the camp fans are there. And I really want to help my friend now over here. This game is a massive juggling game. Because it's, it's legitimately like look here to get rid of this threat and then literally switch it. You have to switch your focus so quickly to go get to the next threat. And it's one of those games that it's just constant. And so we've shut down the, what well, I think it was the Valor. We shut him down. We shut down the Emil now. And now we're looking for the shots on this Chrysler K. We set him on fire. Unfortunately, he doesn't burn out, which is sad. He's got a fire extinguisher. He's one of those people. God. Fire extinguishers. No. You always, when you set someone on fire, you always want 
you want them to be like me, who runs food in pretty much everything. You want them to run food and everything. As soon as you set them on fire, they just burn, and it, you watch the world burn and get happy as your damage ticks over. But unfortunately, he didn't. But we did come round to finish him off, so that's a good thing. And now we're on top of the ridge, and we are gonna charge. Yeah, we're gonna charge these guys down. We've got some healthy people over here, which like the T62A's full health, the Andre's full health. We try and snap the shot of the T62A with RBRT. It doesn't quite work, unfortunately. And I was going to pop a shot there, but luckily I readjusted my aim because he stopped dead, which would have been bad. But, yeah. We are trying to shut down this Panzer 7 now, but there's a dead wreck in front of us, so unfortunately we can't get it. And like I say, this is where it's, it comes down to... I'll look this way, look that way. So, I want to help my guy that's behind me, but this guy needs help because he's got an Andre and that Kampfpanzer going. So we shut down the Kampfpanzer. We're trying to help this 260 now by attracting the attention of the Andre. We pop a shot in, break his turret, and like I say, we are helping him. And we we really want to push forward and get this guy now because the medium behind me is pushed over and he's attacking my guy. So we're now like quickly having to swivel around and, um, well, luckily for us, the Chieftain shuts down the T-62A. But now there's a Panzer Seven here as well. We shoot him in the side in his little weak spot. Breaks his MRI, which is always a thing with the Panzer Seven and the VK-7201K, that if you shoot them in their weak spot on the side, that doesn't, basically doesn't really allow them to side scrape. You do damage Amoraks quite often, which is nice. But we're on five kills, 6.3, and we're like, oh, God, he's on 340 hit points. Don't kill him, please. I want it. And we get it. We get the top gun. And just like that, Nice game on Redshire with Jack and Swindle, and we get 6.6k damage and 1100 assistance. And yeah, it was a nice game, and it's really annoying that that game recorded without sound, because that's just frustrating as hell, especially when you have a nice game like that and you want to show it off, and it's like, great, this would, you know, because I would have had a, because this is the first time the Valor's been on my channel, and it would have been on it ages ago if it wasn't for the fact that this had recorded with no sound. But yeah, that's the way it is. So we ended up finishing with a high caliber top gun, 1700 base, 6.6k damage, 6 kills, 26, 26 shots, 523 hits, 19 pens again, funny enough. It's quite a nice ratio for this gun. And yeah, the Valor, like I say, is a whole package, it's a good tank, but it's one that frustrates me, and I don't play it all that often. So as always, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time.